There's one thing that we can all be sure of. We are all experiencing exactly the same pain right now. And that is, how or why do we want to go back into the office? Okay, so we'll make a start. Yeah. Thank you for all joining. So just, just to help put some context to why we're here today, we collectively uh, we're, we're just thinking about the, the way uh, we're all working at the moment and post-pandemic and looking at how much change there's been in the market. And we, we sort of workshopped to a situation where we thought, why don't we just have an open conversation um, with bringing through industry friends and colleagues together. And for us, it's about the future of work is now. And, and what does that mean? We, we sort of tend to get frustrated with uh, words like hybrid that keeps getting thrown around. And, and, and for us, that's a bit of a naughty word. It can mean lots of different things. Our, our mantra that we sort of came up with was uh, motivate, not mandate, which we thought was, was really um, relevant today. And you'll see that as a, as a theme that we'll touch on. So. This, this sort of session is going to be broken up into really three simplistic um, sections, the what, why, and how. And, and again, as I said, we'll, we'll try to spend predominant time on, on the how because uh, you know, we're all industry professionals here and, and I think we all recognise um, some of the, the surface problems that are obviously in the media and the like and we're all experiencing it. But we'll touch on at least the, the first segment of... Uh, Megatrends, work is evolving and the occupancy pain. The first one is actually an extract from a recent conference I was in with Project Management Institute, summarising what, what is the project economy and what's happening. And, and I'd just like to pose a question to our panellist, Michaeli first, with, uh, with, with an insight to what's, what's been happening more recently in, in Europe. And if you could sort of, yeah, just touch on, touch on that would be great. Yep. Good afternoon. Uh, well, in Europe uh, now, we are uh, different, we can say different trends. Generally speaking, I would say we, have, uh, we are still dealing with uh, three uh, main issues. First is, of course, the post-pandemic crisis. Second is inflation. And the third one is, uh, of course, the Ukrainian war. All of these three issues are affecting all the businesses. Then uh, I would add for sure the labor, uh, labor market is very dynamic today, so very difficult to find uh, talents. And uh, when you find them, they are very much expensive <laughs> compared a few years ago. Also because now I would say the power belongs uh, more to the employees, to, the, to, to, to people searching for new job experience rather than to the employers in Europe is uh, very much like that. I think it's a good segue around how you mentioned uh, that, that, that evolution and the change that's, that's occurring. So that those work trends you see, Christina? So the problem we're really facing, and this is the thing that I get really passionate about, not necessarily in a good way, and you'll find that out after a few drinks, people are all talking about you know, all, all the trends that are happening. There are no trends. We don't have enough data to make a decision about what's working and what isn't. So if you want to make a change in your organisation, and we have to, because there are people who have big, big transactional debt for space that is not being used. And the only way to fix that is to get people back in the office. The only way to get people back in the office is to understand what motivates them. And it's not a cup of coffee and a sandwich anymore. We're way past that point. So if you don't know who your people are, you're not going to get them back into the office. I think uh, yeah, the data engineering side of it oh. is, is so critical. Um, seeing how that, how that translates into the Singapore and Malaysia markets, Leong? It's more or less the same um, like in Europe or maybe in Australia. In Malaysia, maybe a bit lower, 25 to 30. But if talking about Singapore, because it's more dynamic, um, the island is small. But they only can get about 50 to 60% to get back to office. They still need to encourage more and then need to rethink about change 
in terms of the, all the facilities to attract all the staff to come back. Um, connection, culture, sense of belonging. So I think um, we'd all be familiar with perhaps the next slide. We thought this was a, a really um, potent photo with perhaps that, that end user thought process of heading to, to the office. I know it's, it's the colour tone is, is dark, but it is a bit dark and stormy out there. Let's, let's be real about it. Touching on Michaeli, you know, and, and perhaps looking at the, the philosophy of Chorus in, in Europe. We defined basically the three categories of values of, of the company that have uh, at the end human being at the very center. The first one is the engagement, what we call engagement. Engagement is uh, on both sides. So is uh, engagement of the company towards uh, the, the workforce, the employees, and of course uh, the engagement of uh, each of us towards the company in terms of uh, taking responsibility about what you are doing regardless if you are doing that 100% uh, at the office or, or whenever. Second values, category is uh, what we call uh, sharing information and collaborative way of working. And personally, I believe that that's the only way we should follow to make sure that uh, the company will continue to grow on a consistent basis. The third one is what we call in French, audace, means basically think differently, try to understand what to do to differentiate ourselves from the others. It could be through technology, it could be through some uh, new ideas about how I can, I can be a uh, leader of the market uh, through some innovative ways of, uh, of working, of providing my services. Or it could be through uh, also some new services that I can uh, integrate into my offer. So that's basically what we discuss. And uh, again, we are working for a family-owned company. We pay very much attention to the human being. I'm here to meet with my colleagues uh, outside Europe because uh, when I said uh, human being at the center of the organization, it means also that we have to strengthen our human connections and uh, our international presence and, uh, and, uh, and background could could be and, and is actually definitely a key advantage for us uh, towards competitors trying to reinforce the fact to meet face to face on a regular basis and to reinforce our international connections. That point was raised just earlier in the piece when we were chatting, Christine, around the Zoom subject. Um, but, but also uh, even uh, Leong and I are exchanging a story uh, about different projects we've been on. And interestingly, you know, a recent project spending up to 25% of their project budget purely on audiovisual. Now that, that number, I don't know the Pacific benchmarking against pre-pandemic, but it's certainly a lot higher. Um, and it makes sense. Yeah, key performance indicators are no longer key performance indicators for leadership. Key performance indicators now need to be keep people interested, keep them innovating. We have to look at and Michaela said it about the workforce. If you want to do stuff with your workforce, you have to know who they are. And I don't mean, you know, you know them on a first name basis. That's great. There are four styles of behavior ever in the world. You can only be a mix of two. Figure that out for your office employees, your colleagues, your staff, whatever. And then you can create some stuff that is utterly dynamic. Not everybody wants to come into the office, but you know what? We need to figure out how that looks. And commute is a pain in the backside for everyone. Our employers are now compressing their real estate footprint. They're not paying as much in rent anymore. So now they've got money in their pocket and it shouldn't go to their bottom line or their own pocket. It should be reinvested in, if I know you and you've just told me that you know commute's a pain in the backside, here's $100 a month on an Opal card in Sydney to help that. Or here's a, an Uber to and from work every fortnight to help you out with that. Would that help you get back into the swing of being in the office for the two days? Because it's, you know, $60 either way. What's $240 if I've got you present with your colleagues in the office two days a week guaranteed? Building culture. I think this, this tagline's uh, very relevant. In order to give them what they wanted or need, you have to know who your people are. It does start with employment. I mean, can you, I don't know whether any of you have been, but can you imagine being onboarded in a pandemic? 
Hi, welcome to the company. What company? Uh, here's our culture, here's our values. Really? I don't even know who you are. So then what happens? That whole thing is a disaster. I think we, we come up with a collage um, effectively of things that, that need to be incorporated. Um, obviously the centerpiece. Leong's uh, design studio in Kuala Lumpur with, with your work with uh, IWG. Yeah, we've been working with IWG for almost about 10 years from starting to develop their, um, the whole design, how to change in, in, the, in terms of uh, or the whole co-working space from the beginning. And every two years we have to change. We will increase the footprint for the collaboration area. And then when IWG take over spaces, it will completely change the whole thing. And the whole uh, design guideline, it completely talking, yeah, it's all talking about collaboration. And I think that technology has to play a massive role in that. But technology has to be agnostic. You can't dictate who brings the device, what device it is, into your organisation. Wi-Fi is massively important. And you know what? Security. I get security. And I haven't got my phone on me, but I bet you every single one of you does. Right? You've got a phone. I'm telling you now, people, you're being tracked. Right? Guaranteed. Everyone knows where you are and what you're doing. It's just a matter of people looking. So we need to get over this whole, you know, we've got a security issue if we allow Wi-Fi. It's called guest Wi-Fi. Right? Isolate it from your network and let everybody log into it so they can have control over the devices they need to use to be productive. And we're an ageing workforce too. So you need to help us get over that technology gap just in case. When I've got three kids, the stuff that they do with technology blows my mind. And I use technology every day. Yeah, I think we can all agree it's uh, changes on steroids at the moment oh, with, yeah. with that subject. But uh, the key takeaway here is really that, that people-centred approach and the taking care of me in the centre, which, uh, and, and we can illustrate after this, this session um, with, with some of our uh, past projects, particularly in Europe with the Porsche Customer User Experience Centre, um, how this is all encompassing in, in, in some visuals which, which help piece it all together. Just wanted to show this, this imagery in particular, I thought was a fun one in the sense of really simple to, to suggest how, how does that change look and, and obviously flexible workspace is, is again a bit of a catchphrase but what does that truly mean? That might mean demandable petitions, it might mean a whole variety of different furniture options which can be swapped out um, because again we, we don't know what we don't know. And, and that could be next year we have a different scenario to deal with. But I, I love this, this image where it's effectively ex exhibition space. And look, maybe that doesn't work for everybody, but it's just, an, again, another, another tool in the box to look at and consider. And, and in that discovery phase of projects, we, we have options. Particularly a lot of uh, landlords, developers are, are looking at this to say, what can we do with that building that may have been previously used for something else. I mean, the, th the thing is, trends change. That's why they're called trends. People's behaviour doesn't. So you will always revert to type when you want to do something. And if it's been successful for you the first and the second time, you'll do it again the third time. So if you can tap into that, the space almost becomes the second place because you can say, I've got 20% people who really like to collaborate all the time and that's really important for their role. So that's the space you create. I've got 10% of people who are happy if they never see another human being again and like their dog with them. So you create that space. And you know what? If Animals should be allowed to come to work. We've had them for the last two years at our feet, literally. Your organisation can turn around and say, you know what, have you got a pet? Yes. Is it a good dog? No. You know what, we'll pay for your dog to be trained and then once a week you can bring your dog into the office. If you want people to think outside the box, you have to put them outside the box. Otherwise, they're just going to keep doing what they've always done and they actually think that that works. Well, the whole world's suddenly gone, you know what? No, it doesn't. What are you going to do differently? Yeah, I think when we were putting this all together, and, and we chat between the different markets, the consensus was it is very similar. We're all trying to come up with, uh, with you know, similar solutions to similar problems. Um, 
But if we spend just a minute, and I'll, I'll pose Michaeli a question on, on one of the tools that, that Chorus Group has developed over a number of years, the K-Scan tool. Do you want to just touch on that at a high level, Michaeli? We've tried to differentiate uh, our, our business during the past several years uh, by also trying to add in, into our offer towards clients uh, more services. And uh, particularly after having integrated uh, the design into the general contracting services, more recently, we decided to, uh, to integrate uh, what we call strategic consultancy. For us, uh, means uh, particularly change management and workplace strategy. So topics that are uh, at the very beginning of the processes, of all processes about uh, renovating space, about uh, even thinking about the need of, the need of uh, uh, carry out uh, whatever kind of real estate operation for our clients. So uh, we integrated some specific competencies to sell this kind of uh, service. And uh, we've created particularly at, uh, in our headquarters in France, uh, a, a dedicated team made by not construction expert, but uh, expert about uh, strategic consultancy and change management, psychologist. And basically, case scan uh, is, is, a, is a, the first tool we have created after it's a result of uh, two years time research. Uh, it's a survey, basically, of uh, nearly 60 uh, questions that must be addressed to all of the employees of whatever organization with the purpose basically to collect the data. Because uh, if you want to address some company to make a change or uh, to move from one side to, the, to another one, you need to, to understand who they are, why they are in, in, in a place, which kind of new needs they have because of new trends and because of uh, the need of uh, changing and something new about the, inside the organizations. So the purpose of, the, of this uh, tool is basically to collect data in a certain way through this uh, survey addressed to all of the employees. Automatically, the platform generates uh, with this data some uh, dashboards to explain to key people of the company the result of the survey and where they are at the moment of the survey. And after a six month period, you make another uh, survey, another evaluation of the data, and then you can uh, see, in this way you can see if uh, actually the tool works. It works. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 that's, uh, and that's more or less how it works. One of the things that you just said, information, data is just data. So you can gather as much data as you like but if you don't translate data into information and then information into knowledge, there's no point in having the data. So I guess um, to try to synthesize this, Christina, we came up with a, with a phrase. Is that command and control? Command and control. Yeah. Um, collaboration and trust. It's important. Not that all organisations say they do it. Part of what I've done for a very long time is mentor CEOs and CEOs of the top 500 ASX listed companies. And CEOs think they're really, really good at communicating to their people. Nothing could be further from the truth. So what's really interesting is they look at an organization and that same bank. So we, we created, I don't know, I was gonna say pits, but that's not quite the right word. It's an amphitheater. And we threw bean bags in there because it seemed like a good idea five years ago. People were so scared to sit in them in case he walked past and went, what are you doing drinking coffee in a beanbag with your laptop with three other people? That's not work. So command and control is very much about if I can't see you, then how do I know you're doing the right thing? We have to move away from that to collaboration and trust, which means right at the very beginning, we have to go, do you know what? This is your role. You agree with that. Your key performance indicators still are important, but so are your key behavioural attributes. We need to start factoring in behaviours. So if you've got an organisation that says, if I can't see you, I don't think you're working, it's bollocks. And we all know, you know, Christina has joined the conference. Oh, sorry, I've got really bad internet issues. Pfft. Christina has left the conference. And Christina doesn't have internet issues. Mind you, Australia does, but you know what I mean. You'll get in and out of it because you want to and because you can. So trust and collaboration are critically important where you say, you know what, I need you to do this task and I need it done by whatever. It could be a project, six months. Keep me updated, don't care where you work from, don't care how you work or who you're working with, as long as the project gets done on time, on budget, and it's a great outcome for the client. So I think um, to, to wrap up the conversation, um, 
you know, our takeaways here is, is work-life balance, separate it. Culture can never be underestimated. Flexible workspace, there's a whole series of tools that we can introduce on that front. But most importantly, it's just connecting with the organisation, culture and people that, that it is. So there's a lot there. We are happy to help unpack all that. And um, more importantly, we can, we can have some drinks and have more open conversations around uh, some of these uh, complexities and, and where we can help. How we fix it.